I think a lot of people have have a lot of issues prepping for YCSs. Like, I feel like their prep is not good. Because, um, they say they're, like, prepping, but I don't actually, like, I don't know what they're doing, but it's not working, I think. I guess I can tell you guys my approach on how I would do it. I think first things first, I want to figure out, like, what the decks are in the metagame, okay? So, I want to figure out, like, what's being played. Like, what will people play? What can people play? All that good stuff. If I can figure out what decks to expect at the YCS, then I can try to, like, build my deck to beat those decks. Right, and then I'll make concessions somewhere, but it all starts at figuring out what decks people play, right? So first, like for instance, like this right here, like we have let's say like watch this rally, right? I think this is a pretty accurate representation of like all the viable decks that people that you'll play in Swiss, right? Is this pretty accurate? I'm not trying to include too much rogue decks because at some point I'll just make a rogue category. Afterwards, what I want to do now is like assign percentages to these, right? So, assuming this YCS is, is let's say like eleven rounds, right? I want to assume how many of these decks I will play in Swiss, because by doing so, uh, you can then decide like the best cards you should play um, to beat the best decks. Because those are not the best decks, but the decks that are going to be the most represented, which is typically the best deck. It's not always the case, but it's typically the best decks. Um, because if you do, um, then, like, because you can afford, like, I think people uh, forget that you can lose twice at a YCS usually. Um, and still top, right? So, um, I think, like, what stops a lot of people is that they try to build their deck to beat too many things. And when you try to build your deck to beat too many things, you end up losing to everything. Uh, I think you just have to, like, make concessions somewhere. Um, so, so yeah. So, let's assume in three rounds, how many Fire King Snake Eyes and, and uh, Pure Snake Eyes do you think we'll play? I want to say, like, five. Between both of these. So, maybe, like, three and two. What do you guys think? I think that's reasonable, No. Like, about 50% of 11 rounds, I expect to play um, a lot of fire decks, right? Maybe 5 to 6. That's conservative, right? So, like, in 11 rounds, I expect to play 3 out of 11 rounds, and there will be 2 out of 11, right? Or vice versa. So, somewhere, somewhere like, in this range. I think, like, maybe people will play less piercing guys and more fire king saint guys, but... Let's just say combined, it's like five. Okay? Like five to six. Okay? Like, you, it'll all make sense very soon. Like, I'm literally giving you guys free coaching right now. This is literally, this is literally why I'm doing coaching. Free coaching right now. And now, okay, now it's like, okay, let's see. Let's go down the list. Like, voices, voice. If we look at, like, just in general, look at voices, voice. Really popular deck. Okay? Voices, voice, like people love this deck, okay? Um, voices, voice, right here. Look at that. I think just looking at it objectively, I think voices, voice is gonna be the third most represented deck at the YCS. It's a really solid, like, um, mid range deck. Like, it's just a solid, like, it's just a lot of people just like it. It's very simple, it's not too hard. Like, because you have to keep in mind for some people. It's genuinely better to play a deck that's simpler, simple, because you have to know yourself too. There's a lot of people who don't have as much time to play tests, and as a result, like for for those people, it's better to play a deck like Voices that has less room for error, and that's a that should be a factor in your your um your choice, your deck building um choice too, like or like deck choice as well, right? Like if if I play the best deck, am I realistically gonna do as well with it? Because you know, like, I, I just feel like I'm not going to play it as optimal, right? So, like, being able to play a deck that's easier, that's less uh, technical play um, uh, dependent is important because you didn't have as much time to practice. And, you know, may maybe you work a full-time job or maybe you, like, have other things as well, right? That, that makes it so that you can't play test as much as other people, but you still want to play competitive and still play a good deck. Right, then you would definitely play 
a deck like Voices Voice, and that's not necessarily a bad thing at all. So I expect Voices Voice to be 2-3 to three out of YCS. And I think that's pretty reasonable. Like I said, it's not a bad thing at all. I just think that looking at it objectively, like that's why like I, I think about it, I'm like, and, and that's how like I try to like pick the best known engine to play because I'm doing this analysis like every time I go to a YCS. And I think that will help you when you prefer YCS in general. I'm just using YCS Raleigh as a case study. Right? Um, so, so here I would expect this to be two to three. Okay? So at the moment, we have seven to nine fire slash voice. Okay? We'll go into that after because the next step is kind of like figuring out what the standard list will look like because if you can figure out what the standard list looks like that would make it easier for you to like kind of like read people's non-engine so like so like um it's important to understand like what is the average list like what does the, what is the average guy playing what will the average deck list look like because if you can figure that out you can like better understand okay these are hand traps in the metagame that i'm gonna have to play around these are um, cards that I'm expected to get hit with, right? So as a result, um, you can better adapt your non-engine as well, right? So um, if my opponent is main decking talents, maybe I should be summoning my IP earlier after I use a monster effect to play around the talents. You know what I'm saying? So I think that's really, really important. Are you playing the YCS? It's usually quite the week before. Um, I am playing the YCS, but... I guess I just wanted to do this because I feel like it'll be really informative and really relevant. Um, and I, I really want to focus and start doing um, some more content surrounding, like, you know, based on helping people. Because uh, I think that's, like, what I enjoy um, the most, right? Like, uh, helping, get, helping people get better at the game. I think uh, a lot of people, like, they have, like, this one thing that makes it so that they can't like do well at a YCS or something so, and I think like one of the main factors is definitely preparation I think what I'm trying to do with this is to kind of like make it like make it more streamlined in terms of how you should prep for YCS uh, and you can apply this same logic to uh, regionals as well and do this sort of analysis and it's very like uh, and I think this will like make it so that it's uh, easier for you to perform because like and and, and um, by the way it might not always be the case that you play these exact matchups as you expect sometimes you're wrong sometimes you're right right it's all about making the meta call the right choice so it's okay to be wrong but as you do as you attend more events as you attend more um, you know of these tournaments and you do more of this analysis, you'll get better and better at it to the point where you're able to predict, um, you know, these, uh, uh, like these YCS experience a lot better. Um, this is not post LED. This is YCS Raleigh. It's, it's in, uh, it's in the title, uh, right there. Um, like, uh, yeah. So, I just wrote down a general list of everything. Maybe I missed a couple of lists, but if I missed it or I aren't actively thinking about it, it's probably because it's not a popular deck or like enough to care about. It's probably in the rogue category. You can probably combine rogue into one category and just like it literally doesn't matter what they are. Like you literally like um, I think too many people are focusing on the wrong things. Like uh, that's an example of focusing on the wrong thing. Like like naming like decks like Centurion or whatever doesn't actually matter because it's if you can't even like name that deck or like write it on the list if you just make a general list when thinking about it, it's probably just omega rogue like you just like you'll play one or two rogue decks and you'll basically throw a dart at whatever like you'll have a dart you'll, or you'll have like a, a a spinning board of like 20 rogue decks you throw a dart there and it can land on anything and and i think centurion is an example of that plants is an example of that Rogue doesn't necessarily mean it's bad. It's just representation is not there. So, so like, so stop focusing too much on that, to be quite honest, because it's like, it's not going to help you. 
like, you know, you'll play two rogue out of like 11 rounds at best. If you can beat all the meta decks, if you can beat all those other decks, you'll go 9-2 at a Y6 and you'll be have a, you'll have a topping record. Right? Like, I, that's why, like, it's, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's not really the main focus of the, the, the conversation or the point here. Um, so, so like the next step, the next, okay. So like, what's, what's the next most popular deck? I want to say, I want to say like Kashtira. Uh, I, so I actually think it's going to be Pearly, but maybe that's just me, but I think it's going to be like Kashtira, Pearly, Fluanderese, uh, Kashtira, Fluanderese are the shifter decks that will be the mo next most popular. Uh, I think, uh, Stun, Pearly. Branded as well. I think those are probably going to be the next step, I think, right? The next couple of lists. Let's go, thank you for the 13 months. So, if I have to say, I would say that I think it's going to be like four is going to be some, like the next big decks are going to be something like this, okay? Let's say, like, let, let's kind of group them. Okay, Kashira and Flu, I want to group them into one category because honestly, like, they're they're quite similar. Okay, it's a shifter-based strategy, okay? Like, shifter decks, I think, like, one to two. Can we agree? Like, one to two? Because, like, realistically, like, I think at the regional level, you see them a lot. And this, the guy who's playing Flu... Usually plays Kashtira. And the guy who plays Kashtira usually plays Flu. Like, they're literally the same people. Like, you can't tell the difference between a Kashtira player and a Flu player. No cap. Like, because when they shift you, they look the same. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, they literally look... Bro, like... Like... <laughs> it's just... You know what I'm saying? Like... Realistically, you're sick either way. <laughs> so... So, like... I think that's kind of like how I kind of put it. Like, let's just group them for the sake of grouping them, okay? Um, because I think it makes sense. Is there really a bit a difference between preparing for locals and preparing for a regional? I think there's a difference between preparing for locals, regionals, YCSs, hell, even Nats, even Worlds, right? Um, for this event, I would say you're a little more likely to see them as both decks are less technical, but I do agree with what you said about one to two seems close. Yeah, I agree. Like, like I said, I made the point earlier about how, like, I think historically people will gravitate towards decks that are a little bit easier, but still decent enough to do okay with. And that's, it makes sense. Like people can dedicate, dedicate a lot of time to sometimes play the best decks because sometimes the best decks are usually more demanding. Like, in terms of technical abilities, right? And that's okay. That makes sense. That's why, like, Voices Voice is a great example of that. You know, like, it's a deck that has, like, two actions per turn. It's pretty easy um, to relative to play. Um, and and I'll, 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 people just, they, they just play. They, they, they enjoy it. Like, it's, it's just a deck that's, it's not too crazy. Summon low, summon skill guardian, have a trap, have a couple hand traps. You're vibing it. On me in the gate, it's lit. You know, like it's one of those type of trash. So that's why I'm like, if I think like Wise is rally realistically, like the same the people who played fire decks this past format will still continue to play fire. And if we look at like historical YCS data, you'll see that the majority of people enter with fire decks, right? So that's why I'm like, I feel like you can maybe say four to six if you want to be conservative. I, I'm just gonna combine them. Like I, I maybe I, hold on, let me just delete this. Like, uh, it, it depends. Like, if you're winning earlier in your rounds, maybe you end up playing more fire decks or something. But between four to six, like, the same, like, because the, the people who played fire before will now play it again. Like, I don't think that changes. But the people who didn't play fire before aren't just going to be like, man, let's all play fire. Let's, let me play fire king now. Like, they're not, like, that's not realistically what happens, right? Um, Right, because people who played voices will play voices. The people who say flu, the people who play cash will still play cash. So, like the ratio, if you just look at historical Weiss's data, will it will probably be the same? I think. Um. And and I think that I think logically that makes sense. Okay, so 
it's so like six to nine okay so six nine ish right so um i think cashier flu is one to two i think the next dex is gonna be like like runic stun i have to just put it here because and i'll put it at one not even one to two just one i think you're bound to play this deck at some point and one always sneaks in a top cut. A couple runic stun players, one or two, has been sneaking in to top cut. Okay, it literally, like it, it literally just made the finals of a YCS not too long ago. And and people who don't want to play fire, they don't want to play voices. It's a little troll despair. So I gotta I gotta put it at one because like it's one of those decks you'll, you'll encounter once for sure. In Swiss, you'll encounter it at least once. If you make top cut, you'll probably encounter it as well. Somewhere. So have outs. Unless you're okay taking the loss to this deck. Right? Like I said, it's all about making concessions somewhere. You can't prepare for everything, as you see. There's like I have 15 I have 14 decks listed here, and I could probably list five more decks. Like I'm not even done listing decks yet, which is crazy, by the way. Cause I think the next step is like what what like Pearly is like the other deck that got a huge boost that I can see one to two. It's actually like it's another strategy that I think we can definitely expect more players to be on, right? Realistically. The list of two is a huge boost. Don't get it twisted. It's a huge boost. I think um I would be capping if I didn't say that Pearly got way better. Like, uh, like the, bro, like, two delicious is actually a big deal. Um, so I could definitely see it being one to two. Right? Um. Right, so let me delete this, delete this. And then you have, like, I think Branded is, like, the other deck, so let me delete these two. So I think Branded is, like, the other deck, right? I would say one to two as well. Maybe, yeah, like, I don't know. Maybe one, zero to one, one to two, somewhere between there. I'll just put like one. It's like safe, I think. Because Brandy didn't get touched at all. It didn't get touched on the list. And... And uh, it's so it's so really strong deck. Are you one of the ones that tops with Pearly? I see you. Hey man, all I'm saying is I, I've been I've been trying to uh, win with Pearly for a while now. May, maybe this weekend's the weekend. That's all I'm saying. All you know, is that, that's all I'm saying, bro. I've been trying. It is so hard to win with that deck. But you <laughs> you, you know what I mean. Like, I, I don't know what cats did to people, but I literally feel as if, like, people just actually play so many cards for that deck for literally no reason. Brandon's max one deck actually needs high-level game to pilot. I kind of agree with that. Like, I... WCQ PTSD... It was y YCS Indie PTSD, bro. Just please don't play Snake Eyes. I, I, just, I, 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 I'll be honest, guys. I just play the best deck, or what I think, or what I perceive to be the best deck. I guess. I just play the best deck. I, I play typically the best deck, and if I don't play the best deck, I try to play the best deck choice. Can't you play Snake Eyes with Herald as a negate? Yeah, you can. There are people who are making Herald and Snake Eyes. Some people are doing Omega, Omega, this Potter lines. Um, there, there's like a bunch of like setups that people are trying to set, do now. So, do you think it's gonna be a tier zero format after the ban list? I we have to see. I, I I'm kind of curious as well to see if Fire is still gonna be. The biggest representation in Top Cut. I actually, I want to say yes. Like, if, if Fire is fifty percent of Top Cut again, call that whatever you want. But that's basically tier zero in my eyes. Like fifty percent of Top Cut is not. It's not an easy task, by the way. 
Um, so, okay, let, let's start counting. Let's see if we're on track. Four to six. Let's assume low end. So four, two, that's six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And I think the last category is eight is this rogue. Okay. You're going to play one to two rogue decks. Okay. I, I feel sorry for you because the rogue decks are scary, guys. They can be anything from Sword Soul, uh, Ace, T Elements, Colossus Turbo, Combo, Pile, Omega Lol, uh, Manadium, Orcus, uh, uh, Bistial Runic, uh, Centurion, uh, like, I don't even know, like, uh, Sprite, Striker Copers, Rika, like, you know what I'm saying? Salamangre, Salamans, like, uh, what is it? What, what else is there? Exosister, uh, you bells, uh, prank kids, vanquish soul, uh, unchained, uh, raid raptor, raid raptor, uh, with three towers. Oh, GG. Lab Heroes Uh Prank it Runic Right Like Dragon Link Rip Savage Coper You you guys see what I'm doing like you see my point Team Simon X1, Tier 0, Blue Eyes, Best Deck. Uh, 31 Farfa. Like, you see what I'm saying? Like, this is like this is what's gonna happen pretty soon. I think this is realistically like the role category. Like, yeah, sure. Like Triff. Pen best deck. So, like, there's a big chunk of them. Good luck, okay? This this is why, by the way, <laughs> this right here is the hardest part about deck building. And I think you just... Oh, yeah, match... <laughs> Kirin, Trift 2.0. Like, this is basically... This right here is... Bro. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, come on. Not, do you guys understand why deck building is kind of hard now? And this is why I feel like you have to ignore these. Like, literally. Because, wh wh what are you going to do? You're going to put cards in your deck for Raid Raptor? <laughs> like, you're going to put cards for for uh, uh, for for the Team Cyber X1 Blue Eyes deck? Like, you know what I'm saying? And you can definitely get punished for ignoring Rogue. But I don't think you can be mad at yourself... For ignoring that. Yo, thank you for the tier one. Gotta gotta pay for this free coaching. Yo, guys. Um You know, like uh you know what I'm saying this is free coaching right now. I'm literally I'm literally showing you guys the YCS preparation goo. This is how you prep for ISIS. I actually do this with uh, my students back when I used to coach too, where I, I, I would go through with them this process because you can't build a deck without knowing what you're building for, you know? So so like uh like, this is the first step, okay? You gotta do this, okay? Know what to expect. Know your enemy, know yourself. I said that. Okay? So, so right now, okay, we kind of came up... Now I think we're in a good spot now. I think we have an idea now of um, what to expect, okay? So, so right here, right now we have these decks so now of course now we're gonna decide okay what deck we're gonna play so um i think right let's say let's say we just let's say uh let's say we just go with like the best deck right we go with like the the, the best deck we go with we go with fire king or we go with pure snake eyes okay but let's just build the core 
And then I guess we'll go on to my next point, which is like non-engine, right? So let's just build a core. So, okay. So let's say I, if I'm playing Snake Eyes, right? Like something like this. Um, let me just do like pure, I guess. I don't know. It's just easier because I know how to build this, this deck the best, I guess. Right. Right? Like Jet Synchron, I guess. Some people still play this, right? Let's say I play something like this, okay? Um, some people don't play this at all. Sure, it doesn't, doesn't matter. Like, this is the core, okay? Now you gotta decide, like, okay, what... How, okay, like... How do I build... How do I beat the Fire... Like, can we just agree that Fire Decks is gonna be the most representative? So now you have to make your deck. How do you beat the Fire Decks? Well, okay, what did we do before? Oh, we played Hand Traps. Right? There's Hand Trap Mirrors. So, I mean, we can all agree that hand traps are good into these decks, right? So, what type of cards? Valor and Imperm. So, Valor and Imperm are good into these decks. So, does that have coverage into anything else? Because that would be nice, right? Because ideally, if you play it on engine, you want it to beat the most represented deck, but you also want it to have coverage across other matchups. It's fine against Voiceless, right? It's not like a turn ender, but maybe against the Viner is pretty solid. And, you know, maybe against low, if it's, it's a, uh, it could be pretty good because if you can imperm Valor low, it makes it so that they don't count as the full tribute while they're on the field, right? Against Kashira, not the best, but against Fluanderese, um, decent, right? If they don't open Shifter, like, hey, if they don't open Shifter or the Quick Plays, it's still good. Like, I'm not going to not side Valor just because... They have Shifter or Quick Plays in the deck. I'm still going to keep it in. Like, there's... You know what I'm saying? Like, they don't always open those cards. So... And you still need any... You need anything to, like, stop them. Um, you know, Runic Stun. Right? Um, not going to be that good against... You know, like, whatever. Uh, Valor isn't not going to be that good. Uh, you have Purely. Uh, Valor Imperm. They have the Fuel Spell. So, it's hit or miss. Branded... I think Valor Imperm is hit or miss, right? Maybe you can sneak an Imperm on a Luber and draw phase if they start opening. Still hit or miss. Um, so it's like average, right? So if you really want to like go deep, what you would do is you would make something like an Excel sheet. Let me show you an example I have. Because then if you want to go like way deeper, this is what I would do. Because, and I did this for... I did this for... Um, YCS... Richmond prep. Look. You see this? So I actually did this before. So it's like, I'm not just like telling you, I'm not just saying this to kind of like bullshit you guys. Like I actually did this. So, um, this is kind of like the next step in the process where you kind of like write the decks right here that you expect. Um, and I think like maybe in like another video or like maybe in another time I would do it, but it takes a while. Like it's not, you have to like really kind of like, but let, let me just do it as an example, I guess. Cause actually, you know what? I'll do it for you guys. But let's just say this, like Fire King, Snake Eye, Pierce Snake Eye, Voices Voice, uh, Cash Flu, uh, Cash Flu, uh, what is it? Like Runic Stun, uh, Purely Branded. Uh, and then it's like rogue, right? So like, delete this, and then now you kind of want to figure out like, like what's good, right? Okay, so uh, link, uh, it's link for what? This this is like an old this is an old table I, I made. So let's uh let's change that back to white. Okay. Um, and yeah, so, okay, this is where we're at. Okay, so, so now we're here. Um, uh, and we, cause like, cause realistically, like, um, I think that if you want, like, I know this seems like you're, you're probably thinking to yourself like, bro, this seems so unnecessary, but it's like, bro, like you have to keep in mind marginal edges that you have if you can side deck more efficiently quicker because of stuff like this um if you can like uh increase your win rate by like one two percent it actually goes a long way over the course of a pretty long tournament like it actually like these small 
increments of advantages that you can gather is really really important because um at the end of the day this is a card game variance will always be a thing but you want to always give yourself the best odds to perform okay so yes it seems like a lot of work seems like hella pointless but it's like i think if you can give yourself a marginal advantage why wouldn't you right um so so yeah so let's go back to that same discussion i was talking about about like uh valor right so let's say if i like go here and i like let's say i play like valor slash impermanence right um like how good is it into these matchups right let me change these reset this right um I would say that like it's pretty strong against Fire King and Piercing Guy. Like, like sure they can have Kirin, but it's like as if they have Cross Out. Sure. Like, am I not gonna side Imperm Valor or play Imperm Valor into those matchups because they have potentially could draw like Kirin? No, like you still play because it has the ability to potentially end their entire turn. Because the longer you let Fire decks play, the more advantage they accumulate. Right. So. You kind of want to, like, I think we pretty much decided, like, if you look at, like, the past couple of Ys's, that, like, choking those decks early is really important. Like, the first thing you see, just hand trap it. That's, like, not the rule of thumb, but that's typically what I feel like works the best. Like, literally, the first thing you see, bro, they normal summon a special wish, Valor. I'm not trying to, you know what I'm saying? Like, the longer, the more you let them play, the more sus it becomes. Like, because if they start witch and you don't Valor it, and they go original, summon Snake Eye Ash right and they go snake eye ash effect now they can chain kirin you just gave your opponent an out to a hand trap they never should have had an out to right just think about that especially if you don't know if they're playing the fire king version or not right so so like these are the type of things that you know you want to think about obviously it's like a lot easier now because it's pretty standard, but you know, but these are the things you think about to determine like best non engine um, to play, right? So let's like, so Valor Imperm, okay. Uh, okay. Against Voices Voice, it's like, I would say it's average. It could be potentially very good, right? But it's average, I would say. It's not like amazing. But if they like, let's say they bricked, they, let's say they go pre prep, they tribute a nib out their hand to summon Skull Garden and you Valor it. Hey, you have the potential. It's average. It's like, remember, it's average. Like, it has, like, maybe it's good, but it's not always good because they have, if they open, like, anything else, like, you could get potentially cooked. Um, but I would say it's average. Like, it's still decent. You still gotta put it in, right? Um, and, like, if we go into, like, cash, it's, like, very, like, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, the, this shit is ass, right? Can we agree with that? Um, like maybe I say mid if they're playing like the if they're playing like the combo if they play the combo where they try to like make heat soul or whatever I would say it's mid maybe it's not ass but it's like very mid because when you hand trap them they still got like they still got the bodies you know what I'm saying so um yeah I gotta head to a meeting but this is important to be gonna watch the body of course but I'm gonna upload this on YouTube too so I I think it'll be a good idea just upload on YouTube for the people who can watch on Twitch but. Yeah, so like against flu, I want to say it's like good. I, okay, I want to say it's insane. I want to say it's insane because I don't know. Maybe you do this, but I want to say it's I want to say it's green because realistically it is really good. It's just like like they have to draw like they're they have to like draw like the quick plays. But I I would hundred percent if I had Valor anywhere in my main or side, I would always put it in against like flu. You always put it in. It's like really, really strong. So I would say you always put this in. Uh, let me do this after. Oh yeah, this is like nice because this part is like how you decide. Like basically, what I did this when I made this sheet. I basically like, you know, if I call this like YCS Raleigh prep, right? And then you update all of this. Uh, you can basically take this, okay? And post this here. Um, or let me update this one. Do this. 
uh, meta. Okay. Take this. Go here. Put this here. Okay, so that's what you would expect. Okay. Runic Stun, I would say Imperm is good. Maybe I should separate them because it's a little bit different between Imperm and Veiler. Um, but like, I think Imperm is really good against this. I think Veiler is not as good. Um, like, I, I don't think, I don't see a reason why they would ever do it in, in the thing. Um, uh, I think Imperm is insane. I think Veiler is average against Pearly. I think these are always both gonna be good. I think flu is always gonna be good. I think Valor is like more average against flu, but you still put it in. Um, I think I think these are always gonna be like this. And against voices, voice. I think imperm is like. Uh, I think you still put it. It's like it's like the same. It's like average, potentially good. Right. Um. So so I think this is what I would, you know, that's what I would put it against. Branded Valor is like. I wouldn't say mid. It's not completely ass, but it's definitely mid, right? They can draw face, summon something. You get completely fried. They have Brandon lost up. You can't even bailer it. I think Imperm is like average. Potentially very good. Or maybe still mid. I, I would say like one of this. Now, Imperm Valor, I think it's always going to be potentially very good against Rogue. It depends on what Rogue you play. But I'll say for the most part, it's always gonna be average. That's why hand traps are good. Because they're like against rogue decks, typically, it's like pretty solid. Um Aren't they the same before side? Uh what do you mean? But yeah, this is just like like I hand traps to consider main deck. So like non-engine to consider, right? This is like because, like, basically, if you do this, you can basically kind of, like, decide. Because, like, basically, okay, so whenever I do, like, tier lists of, like, hand traps and stuff like that, like, S tier, A tier, whatever, um, they're kind of, like, general. But if you want to take it a step further from a prep perspective, you do something like this. And it will help you, like, really figure out exactly what not, like, what's, like, the best non-engine to play. Obviously, it also depends on your deck. I think certain decks can, like, break the rules a little bit. Like, for example, like, if you're playing a Runic deck, this might not apply, right? Like, I I'm not saying this is, like, the end-all, be-all of, like, deck building prep and, like, this is not the end-all, be-all of everything. But if you're playing a deck that has a lot of non and So, like, this is, like, typically, like, decks that have a lot of non-engine. This is, like, a fire deck, basically. Decks that have a lot of non-engine. Fire decks, Pure Saint Eyes, Voices Voice, Kashtira... Flu, those type of decks have like a lot of non-engine, right? Um, and then you have to decide within the context of your deck what's better. So like you could really take it a step further. But I think this is like kind of like just generic things to consider, right? Right? So yeah. Um I'll do it for like a couple more so you guys get the point. But this I think does this make sense to people? I think this makes sense. Um, so, so like, yeah, like, I mean, like, this is you're gonna see very soon why Ash Blossom is broken. By the way, look how broken Ash Blossom is. I, like, it's always gonna be average, but like, it's literally like, uh, so like, average voices voice. It's like average cash. It's like uh, average, but like flu is like broken. Like, Runic Stun is broken. Um, it's, like, pearly. It's, like, uh, average. Uh, broken. And then, I guess, Rogue is all, like... Like, <laughs> it's just, like, yellows and greens. Like, you're... It's a pretty good... <laughs> like, Ash is just so crazy. Ash is just, like, crazy. You know what I'm saying? It's just a crazy ass card. Like, at, at best, it's average. Which is OP, in my opinion, right? Like, like, Ash Blossom is so crazy. Um, yeah. And, like, we can keep going down the line. Like, you know, like, what's next? Like, Nibiru, right? I think, like, Nibiru is, like, I think this is a card that's, like, mid, mid. 
what was his voice like uh, uh it's like mid it could be good depending if they play into it but i would say it's bad it's like borderline unplayable by the way against kashira it's like pretty good uh potentially average potentially very good because they play into it especially if they do the draco sack stuff uh fluana Reese, it's bash this shit's ass runic stun ass pearly ass uh what is this branded ass rogue i want to say it depends on what rogue it is but i want to say mid actually i want to say average as opposed to be very good i guess rogue nib has the potential to be absolutely insane nib has the ability to be absolutely insane against rogue i guess flu if they do like the double m pen combo whatever maybe but i don't think like it's real like i would definitely put nib as like average at best against most rogue decks we can agree but i think okay so i mean the next step guys by the way is you have to do combination analysis of like if you draw nib with like valor it becomes green so like this is not a good representation of nib being bad it's more of the fact that nib um is very bad by itself so like you have to then determine is nib like sh like like but this is why by the way nib is never the first three hand traps it's always gonna be like the 10 11 12 or like the third like the 13 14 15 hand trap for the most part. But against Fire King and Pure Snake Eye, like it's good. But obviously it's never a card you play alone. So I think it is a lot. I think that like Nib, to be honest, you can bump it a tier up for all, like in general because like of the stuff that got hit, right? Baron and Savage being banned does i think make nib a little bit better or like just in general like and the decks that people might play now might make nib overall a little bit better so it's not a fair representation per se of how good nib is so definitely keep that in mind. i mean but you have to also like this is like part of the critical thinking where you you know um you kind of like think a little bit more about like hey like how like how good is this card into this matchup now how good is it as like a card overall for the meta game right because you you might want specific hand traps. You might want specific cards for, like, matchups you expect. But you also do want cards that are generically decent against everything. So, I think that's also, like, another big consideration. Uh, Joel and Lockbird. I think against, like, Fire King Snake Eye, it's pretty strong. We can agree on that. I think against, like, Pure Snake Eye, it's, like, average. I don't think it's, like, the worst. Against Voices Voice, it's average. It can definitely make them pass. Against Cash, is very mid. Um, against Fluanderese, it's... I think it's green. Even if they have Shifter. Does not matter. Doesn't make... Draw is not bad. Because your opponent can draw Shifter. Like, that doesn't make sense. Because you're just assuming your opponent always have the out to it every time. At that point, you would never play any card ever. Right? Because your opponent could just play three of cards that outs, outs it. Runic Stun, I would say it's very mid. Like, some people keep it in because you can maybe drop them going a lot of plus. The reason why I don't say it's green against Voices Voice is because they have too many ways that, like, inherently just plays around it. Like, Low is an a crazy-ass card. The fact that it just places a card for... It places the spell face up or the trap face up from your deck is really crazy. Um, I think against Purely, it has... I think it's average. Um, I think against Branded, depending on the version, I would say it's like mid. Because at the end of the day, if they go Branded Fusion, they still Puppet Lock you through through Droll. Doesn't matter. Like a normal summon a Luber, get Branded Fusion, you're Puppet Lock. Droll, no problem. I think it's good when you go first into Pearly. Yeah, sure. And against Rogue, I, okay, my take on Droll against Rogue is that it's actually broken. What do you guys think? I typically put Droll as a broken card against Rogue, because typically against Rogue, Droll just goes crazy, because 
all the rogue decks do a lot of crazy against like i'm actually gonna make it green no cap but yeah there's like certain rogues like that don't so you can make maybe you can do green i mean yellow some decks don't care i, I would say it's average at best at, be at worst it's average sorry at worst it's average at best it's green right so i think it's like solid um and plans to resolve jasmine like four times yeah maybe you guys want to do something for like breakers maybe okay let's do it talents now the thing with okay so here's the biggest tip to decide how good is break how good are breakers like, how, how do you decide if they're good or not and so here's my biggest tip first off you have to decide what kind of end boards are people making right that's the question you have to ask yourself oh my god i made it yellow oopsies okay you have to answer this this is really important because if they're end board you know what i'm saying is like Apollo, then hey, maybe Talents is decent to it. So it all depends on like what type of you have to figure out what end boards people are making to determine how good a non engine is. So let's okay, like give me what what, what are Fire King ending on right now? Fire King say guys, you open Ash, which what do you end on? Like, what are people ending on? And does anyone in the chat know? I have some idea. I think it's like... It depends. Like, I don't know. I've seen everything. That's why, like, I'm not really sure, to be quite honest, at this point. But I think Appaloosa is realistic, right? Can we agree? Appaloosa. Zalantis. Or Amblewell. Princess Engrave. Uh, Garunix Engrave. Right. Um, sometimes it's either... It's like e Flam plus Arvada. Or Flam plus IP. It depends. Some people scale Arvada. Use, most of the people scale Arvada. I would say. Okay. You should do this because doing this is really good. Like, if you can do this, you will know right away if you even want to play Breakers. Do it, bro. Do you guys really want to play Breakers in this board? Maybe it's beatable. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, sure. 100%. Okay, okay. Damn, a lot of you guys are confident. Okay, okay. Damn. You guys kind of, you guys confident, eh? A little Breaker format, eh? I would say it's average. I don't think you'll win by itself, but I think it does give you a chance. Like, I don't think it's, um, I don't think it's like insane, but it's pretty solid. Like it's, I think Appaloosa and the like talents into Appaloosa, look at your opponent's hand, stuff like that. It's definitely pretty solid. Yeah, you definitely need multiple breakers, but let's just assume, like, in general. I feel like it's still a pretty solid card. I think Talents in one second will always be live, no? Okay, what is Pure Sling guys doing, guys? What are they trying to end on? We can do this exercise a couple more times. Lurge? Yo, what's good? I guess Pure's even better. So, like... Apollo, so it's like, what, Appaloosa, Flam, IP, uh, sometimes Princess Engrave, depending if they open Witch, right? Ah, uh, yeah, what does Ash plus Witch end on anymore? It could be a bunch of things. Ash versus Calamity's Lock. GG's. I like to think it's mid, in my opinion. 
Like, I would say it's kind of mid. If they play Goddess, maybe they could dodge it. Yeah. But even then, I don't know if it's that necessary, though. Like, as Voices Voice, it always trades, I guess. So, like, I would say it's, like, average. I guess Voices Voice, it always trades. I guess Kashira, it's probably, like, insane. Against flu is kind of like it's like average. Runic stun it's like unplayable. Against purely, I would say it's average, to be honest, bro. Like you can randomly talents take and it's so broken. Like every pearly player uses their noir. Like they're not gonna just sit on it and not do anything. Right? Like, I think it's so average, but it should be very good. Maybe it's more mid, but I, th I I always find it actually pretty good, to be honest. I actually like Talents going down in a pearly, to be honest. Against Branded, I mean, you're probably getting locked or something. Or like, like, I don't, like, what do you even do? I don't, I don't think it's good at all. And against Rogue, I feel like it's usually ins uh, it's usually insane. I, I would say it's average because there's like a bunch of ro Rogue decks out there. But if you can like name like certain Rogue decks, it's probably good. I think depending on what Rogue they play. Uh, Brand should be orange, otherwise ratings. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's always gonna be average. That's potentially very good. I mean, it's one of those cards you need to definitely combine. I'm trying to think about it like even because like standalone, how good it can potentially be, right? Yeah. No, no, for sure. I think going first, we can always agree that Towns is just like, it's a, always going to be good going first if people play Hand Trap. So I don't think that's the concern. I think like that's like easy to figure out. I think you kind of want to figure out more of the stuff that's like where you kind of like have to sit down and think about it a little bit more. No? Right? So I, I think we know that. So for sure. Um, but yeah, so. I can do the rest of these, but I'm going to leave this up to you guys to kind of figure out. But yeah, I think that's like the next step that I would do in terms of like preparation. I think this is like a good way to kind of like just get your feet wet and kind of like critically think about, okay, these, this is the one engine I want to play. This is how, um, and, 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 uh, and afterwards, I think like deck choice and like cards and stuff like that is a whole nother conversation. That's like. I think way more complicated than I probably need another like hour for, but I think overall, I think that's where I'm at. So kind of hope you guys enjoyed that discussion there and maybe it helps you when you're prepping yourself as well.